توبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون My respected elders and my dear brothers and sisters I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu May peace mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Almighty God be on all of you. The topic of this evening's talk is Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the various world religious scriptures. Many people have a misconception that Islam is a new religion which came into existence 1400 years ago. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on this earth. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the founder of this religion, but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God, which was sent for the whole of humankind. The glorious Quran says in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 24, wa min illa nazir. There is not a nation to whom we have not sent a warner. Allah says in Surah Rod, chapter number 13, verse number 7, wali kulli common hard, and to every nation have we sent a guide. By name, there are 25 prophets of Almighty God mentioned in the Quran. For example, Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all. There are no less than 25 prophets mentioned in the glorious Quran by name. But Allah also says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 164, and Surah Ghafir, chapter number 40, Verse number 78, we narrate to you the stories of some of the messengers or some of the prophets, of the others we don't. That means all the prophets have not been mentioned by name in the glorious Quran. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said, it's a Sai Hadith, which is mentioned in Mishkad al Masabi, volume number three, Hadith number 5737. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent about 124,000 prophets on the face of the earth. But by name, only 25 are mentioned in the Quran. But all the messengers that came before the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only sent for their people. And the complete message which they brought was only meant to be followed in totality till a particular time period. All the messengers that came before Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they were only meant for a particular group of people. For example, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was only sent for the Jews, for the Bani Israel. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 49, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent as a messenger to the Bani Israel, to the children of Israel. The same message is repeated in Surah Saf. Chapter number 61, verse number 6. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says to the Bani Israel, I've been sent as a messenger to you. And this same message is even repeated in the Bible. It's mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew. Chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, he tells to his apostles that, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles, who are the Gentiles? The non-Jews, the Hindus, the Muslims. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Enter ye not into the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The same message is repeated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I have not been sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That means, according to the Quran and 
the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was only sent for the Bani Israel, only for the Jews, for the children of Israel. But Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran, from Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 40, which says, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah, and he is the seal of the prophets. Allah is all-knowing, full of knowledge. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger of Almighty God, he was not sent only for the Muslims or only for the Arabs. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the worlds, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. Allah repeats the message in Surah Sabah, Chapter number 34, verse number 28. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا قَفَّةً لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا We have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the human beings yet do not know. Because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the last and final messenger, and no other messenger, no other prophet is going to come after him, that's the reason he was not sent only for the Muslims or for the Arabs. He was sent for the whole of humankind. We Muslims, because we believe that the glorious Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the last and final revelation of Almighty God, whatever the Quran says, we believe. That's why we also believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger, and we also believe that he was sent for the whole of humankind. But most of the non-Muslims, the non-Muslims in general, they do not believe that the Quran is the word of God. That's the reason they may not agree that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the last and final messenger of God and was sent for the whole of humanity. That's the reason to convince the non-Muslims. I'm taking the help and guidance of one of the verses of the Quran, which I consider as the master key for Dawah for conveying the message to the non-Muslims. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 64, Ta'ala ila bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. When we are speaking with different types of people, the best way is, as the Quran says, come to common terms as between us and you. So let us analyze what do the various religious world scriptures have to speak about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So the non-Muslims, if they believe in these scriptures, which they follow, if it's mentioned in the scriptures, if they consider it, to be the word of God, then they have to even believe in the message of these scriptures. Let us first discuss Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Hindu scriptures. The Hindu scriptures can be broadly divided into two categories, the Shrutis and the Smritis. Shruti means that which is revealed, which is understood, which is heard. The Shruti, according to the Hindu scholars, is considered to be the word of God. And they are divided into two parts, the Ved and the Upanishads. The Sanskrit word Ved is derived from the word Vid, which means knowledge par excellence. And there are four types of Vedas, Rig Ved, Yajur Ved, Sam Ved, and Atharva Ved. Though exactly when did these Ved come into existence is not known. But according to Swami Dayanand Saraswati, who's the founder of the Arya Samaj, he says that the Ved are 
1310 million years old. But the majority of the Hindu scholars, they say that the Ved are approximately 4,000 years old. In which part of the world did it first come is not known. Who was the person to whom it was first given is not known. In spite of all these ambiguities, it is yet considered to be the word of God, and it is the most authentic and the most highest scriptures amongst all the Hindu scriptures. The next in authority are the Upanishads, derived from the Sanskrit word upa, which means near, ni matlab down, shad matlab sit, sitting down near. When the pupils and students sat next to the teacher to acquire knowledge, it's called as Upanishad, which means knowledge which removes ignorance. There are more than 200 Upanishads, but the Indian culture gives a figure of 108, out of which some are picked up as the principal Upanishads. Some have picked up 10, some 12. Shirada Krishna has picked up 18 and written a book, The Principal Upanishads. The next type of scriptures are the Smritis. Smriti means that which is remembered. It means memory. The Hindu scholars say Smritis are scriptures written by human beings, by rishis. And they are next after the Shruti. The Shrutis are higher than the Smritis. They're also called as Dharma Shastra because they tell how a life should be led by an individual, by the community, and by the society. One of the most important Smriti is the Purana. Purana means ancient. It talks about the stories of deities, about the creation of the universe, about literature. And Maharishi Vyas has compiled the Puranas into 18 voluminous parts. One of the most important Puranas is called as the Bhavishya Purana. Bhavishya means future. This Purana speaks about the future. And it's mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khan 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8. A Malaysia will come along with his companions from the desert, and his name shall be Muhammad. Peace be upon him. And Raja Bhoj will give this Mahadev Arab a bath in the Panch Garf and will welcome him with honor and address him with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind, you have created a great force to fight against evil people. This prophecy of Bhavishya Purana Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 5 to 8, it says that a Malachya will come. Malachya in Sanskrit means a foreigner. He will come along with his companions talking about the Sahabas from a Marusthal. Marusthal in Sanskrit means a sandy track or a desert. His name shall be Muhammad, peace be upon him. Raja Bhoj will address this Mahadev Arab with reverence and say, O oh, pride of humankind, we know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a pride of humankind. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Kalam, chapter number 68, verse number 4, Verily thou art standeth on the highest standard of character. Allah says in Surah Ahzab, chapter number 33, verse number 21, Verily in the Prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him, you will find a very beautiful pattern of conduct. He further says that he will collect a great force to fight against the evil people. And we know that was done by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Some people may say that the Raja Bhoj mentioned in this prophecy was present in the 11th century, 500 years after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and was the descendant of the 10th generation of Raja Shilavahan. These people, they failed to realize that like the monarchs of Egypt, they were given the title pharaohs. There were many pharaohs. There was not one pharaoh. Like the kings of Rome were called as Caesars. There was not one Caesar, there were many Caesars. Similarly, the kings of India were given the title Bhoj. 
So there was not one Raja Bhoj, there were many Raja Bhoj. So this Raja Bhoj is not the one they're talking about in the 11th century. It is much earlier before than the 11th century. Further, it's mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khand 3, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 10 to 27. The land of the Malichas has been spoiled. There was an enemy who was killed earlier. Now he's been sent by a more powerful enemy. I will send a man by the name Muhammad, peace be upon him, to guide these people to the straight path. Oh, Raja Bhoj, you need not go to the land of the Pishachas, because I, through my kindness, will purify you where you are. Then a man with an angelic disposition comes to Raja and tells him that Arya Dharm will prevail in this world. I have been sent by Ishwar Paramatma. My follower shall be circumcised, who doesn't have a tail on the head, who will grow a beard, who will create a revolution, who will give the call for prayer. He will eat all lawful things. He will eat all sorts of animals, but will not eat the flesh of swine. He will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare. He will be called as Musalman. This prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says that my follower shall be a person who is circumcised. And we know the Muslims are circumcised. He will not have a tail on the head. That's a shendi or a chutki. He will grow a beard. He will create a revolution. He will give the call for prayer. That's talking about the adhan, like the Muslims give. He will eat all lawful things. He will eat all sorts of animal, but will not eat the flesh of swine. And Allah says in the Quran in no less than four different places. In Surah Bakhra, chapter number two, verse number 173. Surah Maida, chapter number five, verse number three. Surah Anam, chapter number six, verse number 145. And Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 115. Hurrimat alaykumul maitu tu waddamu walahmul khinzeer. Wa ma uhilla ali gair illa bi. Forbidden for you for food are dead meat, blood the flesh of swine, and any food on which any name besides Allah's name is taken. So because the Quran says in no less than four different places that flesh of swine is prohibited, we Muslims don't eat pork. The prophecy further says they will not be purified by herbs and shrubs, but will be purified by warfare, and they will be called as Musalman. This prophecy clearly indicates about the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khand 1, Adhyay 3, Shlokas 21 to 23. It says that the seven sacred cities of Kashi have been filled with corruption and rakshas. In the land of the Malichya, the followers of the Malichya Dharm are good people. All good qualities are found in them. And in this country, we find all sorts of vices. O oh, Rishi, glorify the name of the Lord. Here too, it is talking about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his followers. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also prophesied in the Vedas. He is prophesied in Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, mantra number 1 to 14. It is called as Kuntap Suktas. Kuntap means hidden gland in the abdomens. That means the meaning of these verses are hidden, and you'll come to know about it later on. Kuntap also means free from misery, also means peace, similar to Islam. It's also related to the center of the earth, and we know Makkah is the center of the earth. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 96, that the first place of worship was Bakka which is another name for Makkah. Time will not permit me to go through all the 14 mantras. I'll just briefly speak about the first four mantras. Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, mantra number one says, He is Narashansa. He is Kaurama, who has been protected from 60,090 enemies. Mantra number two says, He is a camel riding Rishi. Mantra number three says, he is Mama Rishi. Mantra number four says, he is Vashivis Reb. 
द फर्स्ट मंत्रा सेस ही इज नरशंसा नर इन संस्कृत मीन्स अ ह्यूमन बींग और अ मैन शंसा मीन्स प्रशंसा प्रेज वर्दी अ मैन हु इज प्रेज वर्दी विच इज एग्जैक्टली द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ द अरेबिक वर्ड मोहम्मद विच वॉज द नेम ऑफ द लास्ट एंड फाइनल मैसेज मोहम्मद सल्लम इट फर्दर सेज ही इज कौरमा वन ऑफ द मीनिंग ऑफ कौरमा इज अ प्रिंस ऑफ पीस and a beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a prince of peace the other meaning is an immigrant and we know prophet muhammad peace be upon him migrated from makka to madina and he was an immigrant it further says he will be protected from 60090 enemies and we know the population of makka that was against prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was approximately 60000 mantra number 2 says he will be a camel riding rishi no indian rishi or a brahmin will ever ride a camel because riding a camel is prohibited for a brahmin it's mentioned in manusmriti chapter number 11 verse number 202 that a brahmin will not ride a camel or an ass therefore it has to be a prophet who is a foreigner third mantra says he is mama rishi or maharishi mama some verses say mohammed some say great rishi Mantra number four says, "He is Reb. Reb means one who praises, which is the meaning of the other name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One who praises in Arabic is called as Ahmad, which was the other name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also prophesized in Atharva Ved, book number twenty, hymn number twenty-one, mantra number six. It says, it speaks about the battle of Azab, the battle of Ali's, and it says." that he will be protected from 10000 enemies and he will win the battle without fighting it he will be a karu now karu in sanskrit means a person who praises in arabic it means ahmad which is another name for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it says he will win the battle without fighting it talking about the battle of azab which was won without fighting it and we know the approximate population the enemies at that time were 10000 it further says in atharva ved book number 20 hymn number 21 mantra number 7 that almighty god will overthrow 20 kings and he will protect the abandu from 60099 enemies abandu in sanskrit means an orphan the other meaning of abandu means praiseworthy which is the translation of mahammad into english peace be upon him so abandu in sanskrit if you translate to arabic means mahammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam it says that almighty god will overthrow 20 kings and we know that there were approximately 20 chieftains in makkah at the time of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam won all of them and the enemies against the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam at that time was approximately 60000 the same prophecy is also repeated in rigved book number 1 hymn number 53 mantra number 9 but the sanskrit word used is sushrama sushrama also means one who is praiseworthy which is the meaning of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also prophesied in agni mantra number 64 and it says that this rishi he will not drink the milk of his mother he will not be breastfed by his mother and we know prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not breastfed by his own mother and bibi halima may allah be pleased with her she was the one who breastfed muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is also prophesized as ahmad one who praises in several places in uttar chik mantra number 1500 in indra chapter number 2 mantra number 152 in yajurved chapter number 31 verse number 18 in rigved book number 8 hymn number 6 mantra number 10 in atharva ved book number 8 hymn number 5 mantra number 16 in atharva ved book number 20 hymn number 126 mantra number 14 prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
besides being prophesied as Ahmad, is even prophesied in several places as Narashangsa. As I mentioned earlier, Narashangsa is derived from Nar, which means a human being or a man, and Shansa comes from the word Prashansa, which means praise, a man who is praiseworthy. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is prophesied by name as Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Narashansa in several places in Hindu scriptures, in Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 13, mantra number three, in Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 18, mantra number nine, in Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 106, mantra number four, in Rig Ved, book number one, hymn number 142, mantra number three, in Rig Ved, book number two, hymn number three, mantra number two, in Rig Ved, Book number five, hymn number five, mantra number two. In Rig Ved, book number seven, hymn number two, mantra number two. In Rig Ved, book number ten, hymn number sixty-four, mantra number three. Rig Ved, book number ten, hymn number one hundred eighty-two, mantra number two. Yajur Ved, chapter number twenty, verse number thirty-seven. Yajur Ved, chapter number twenty, verse number fifty-seven. Yajur Ved, chapter number twenty-one, verse number thirty-one. Yajur Ved, chapter number twenty-one, verse number fifty-five. Yajur Ved, chapter number twenty-eight, verse number two. Yajur Ved, chapter number twenty-eight, verse number nineteen. Yajur Ved, chapter number twenty-eight, verse number forty-two. You can go on only giving references of the Hindu scriptures where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is mentioned by name. Time does not permit us, you can give a lecture for a full day only on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hindu scriptures. Due to limitation of time, I'll just mention one more prophecy about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hindu scriptures, that is about Kalki Avatar. It's mentioned in Bhagavad Purana, Khanda 12, Adhyay 2, Shlokas 18 to 20. It says that in the house of Vishnu Yas, the noble souled Brahmin, the chief of the village of Sambala will be born Kalki. He will be given superior qualities and will be given eight supernatural qualities. He will ride a white horse and carry the sword in the right hand. It's further mentioned in Bhagavad Purana, Khand 1, Adhyay 3, Mantra number 25. In Kalyug, when kings will be like robbers, in Kalyug, when kings will be like robbers, in the house of Vishnu Yas will be born Kalki. He is even prophesied in Kalki Purana, chapter number two, mantra number four. It says that in the house of Vishnu Yas, the noble soul Brahmin, the chief of the village of Sambala, will be born Kalki. It's mentioned Kalki Purana. Chapter number two, mantra number five, he will be helped by four companions to fight the evil people. It's mentioned Kalki Purana, chapter number two, mantra number seven, he'll be held by the devatas or the angels in the battlefield. It's mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number two, verse number 11, he'll be born in the house of Vishnu Yas in the womb of Sumati. It's mentioned in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 15, he'll be born on the 12th day of the month of Madhav. In short, all these verses of the Hindu scriptures, they speak about the Kalki Avatar. I'll just mention in brief the few points which is prophesied in the scripture. Point number one, his father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God. Yas means the servant. It means the servant of God. If you translate into Arabic, it means Abdullah, which was the name of the father of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The mother's name will be Sumati. Sumati in Sanskrit means serenity, calm, peace. In Arabic, it means Amina, which was the name of the mother of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he will be born in the village of Sambala. Sambala means a place of serenity and peace. And we know Makkah was called as Darul Aman, means the house of peace. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in Makkah. It further says he'll be born in the house of the chief of the village of Sambala. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born in the house of the chief of Makkah. It further says he'll be born on the 12th day of the month of Madhav. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on the 12th date of Rabbi Awwal. 
It further says that he will be the last rishi, the last prophet, the antim rishi. And we know it's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Azab, chapter 33, verse number 40. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim mirjalakum, walaki Rasulullah, wa khatam in nabin, wa kana Allahu bi kulli shayin alima. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the father of any of you men, but he is the messenger of Allah and is the seal of the prophets. Allah is all knowing and full of knowledge. So the Quran says that he will be the last messenger prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It further says that this Rishi, this Khalki Avatar, he will get the knowledge, the enlightenment. The first one at night time in a cave. And then he will go towards north and come back. We know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the first wahi, he got was at night time in Garahi in Jabli Noor. And the Quran says in Surah Dukhan, chapter 44, verse number 2 and 3, as well as Surah Qadr, chapter 97, verse number 1, which says, Inna anzalna fi laylatul qadr. Verily, we have revealed the Quran in the night of power. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated to Medina, which was in the north direction of Makkah, and then he came back to Makkah. It further says he will be given extremely good qualities. It further says he will be given eight supernatural qualities. The eight mentioned in the Hindu scriptures is wisdom, self-control, revealed knowledge, respected lineage, valor, measured speech, gratefulness, and utmost charity. All these eight qualities, alhamdulillah, are found in the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It further says that he will be a messenger for the whole of humankind. As Allah says in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28. We have sent thee not but as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sin. But most of the human beings here do not know. It further says that he will be given a white horse. And we know Muhammad was given the burak by which he did the miraj. It also says that he will ride a horse carrying the sword in the right hand. And we know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even took part in the battle, most of which were in self-defense. He actively took part and even had the sword in the right hand. The prophecy further says he will guide the ignorant people to the straight path. And we know Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guided the Arabs. Those days were called as Ayyamul Jahiliya, the days of ignorance. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the help of the Quran, he guided the Arabs from darkness to light. It further says he'll be helped by four companions, referring to the four sahabas, the Khulfa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, Hazrat Usman, and Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with them all. And it says that he will be helped by the devtas, the angels in the battlefield. And we know the Quran mentioned in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number three, verse number 123 to 125, as well as in Surah Anfal, chapter number eight, verse number eight and nine, that the angels helped Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the battle of Badr, and because of them, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was victorious. This was in brief, talking about the Kalki Autar, which is mentioned in the Hindu scriptures. For more details on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Hindu scriptures, you can refer to my video cassette on this topic, which gives more details on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hindu scriptures. Let us discuss the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Parsi scriptures. Zoroaster, was the founder of Zoroastrianism, also known as Parsiism. It originated in Persia about two and a half thousand years ago. It is also called as a religion of Meganism or a religion of fire worshippers. The sacred scriptures of the Parsis are the Dasatir and the Avesta. Avesta is also called as Zand Avesta. The Dasatir is further divided into Khurda Dasatir and Kalan Dasatir. The Avesta is also further divided into Khurda Avesta and Kalan Avesta, also known as Zend and Mahazend. If you read these Parsi scriptures, in several places, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been prophesied. It's mentioned in the Avesta in Farwadin Yasht, chapter number 28, verse number 129. It says that his name will be victorious. His name will be Astwet Areta. He will be called a Soshin. 
it says that he will be called as victorious, as Soshyant. His name will be Astavit Areta. And we know Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was victorious in Fatih Makkah. And the word Soshyant, according to Hastings Encyclopedia, means a person who is praiseworthy, which is the translation of the Arabic word Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned by name in the Parsi scriptures. It also says he will be Astavit Areta. Astavit Areta means a person who praises, which is the translation of the second name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is Ahmad. Ahmad also means one who praises. Further, it's prophesied in the Avesta, in Zamyad Yasht, chapter number 16, verse number 95, that his friends will come, the friends of Astavit Areta, who will be fighting against the evil. They will be well-thinking, well-speaking, and well-doing. And their tongue will not utter a single falsehood. This is talking about the Sahaba. And the name again is mentioned, Astavit Areta, which means one who praises, that is Ahmad, peace be upon him, which is the other name of Muhammad It talks about the Sahabas, that the companions of the Prophet will be good people. They'll be well-thinking, speaking good things. They'll be doing good things. And their tongue will never utter a falsehood. That means they will not tell a single lie. And we know from history that all the Sahabas, mashallah, they were truthful. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is also prophesied in the Dasatir, that is the other scripture of the Parsis. Dasatir means Das and Atir, means a book containing 10 parts. It is also plural of Dastur. Dastur means a religious law. So it is a book containing 10 parts, a religious law. It's mentioned in the Dasatir, when the Parsis will forsake the religion, when the Zoroastrians will forsake the religion, and they will become desolate. A man will arise from the desert. His followers will subjugate the Persians and will conquer the arrogant Persians. They will be a mercy to the humankind. They will not worship the fire in the temple, but will pray in the direction of the house of God, of Abraham which will be free from idols. They will be the masters and rulers of Persia, thus Balk, and the other religious places of Persia, of the Parsis. And their prophet will be an eloquent person doing miraculous things. This prophecy also refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad It's further mentioned in the Bundai Hash, chapter number 30, verses 6 to 27, that the Soshyant shall be the last prophet. Soshyant, as I mentioned earlier, according to the history of the encyclopedia, means one who is praiseworthy, referring to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it says in the prophecy, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be the last prophet. This was in brief regarding Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Parsi scriptures. Let's discuss the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the Buddhist scriptures. Almost all the Buddhist scriptures, they speak about a Maitri to come. It's also mentioned in Chikka Varsunar Setanta, D11.76. It says that another Buddha will come by the name of Maitri, the Holy One, the Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. Whatever he will get from supernatural knowledge, he will preach to the whole world. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will preach a way of life which will be truthful and wholly perfect. He will have several thousands of monks as I have several hundreds of monks. This prophecy is also repeated in the sacred books of the East, volume 35, page number 225, that a Maitri will come 
which such and such criteria and qualities. And further it says that he will be a leader of thousands of people as I am a leader of hundreds of people. It further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 217 and 18, that Ananda, he asks Buddha that, oh blessed one, after you have gone, who will guide us? So the blessed one Buddha, he replied, that I am not the first Buddha in this world, neither am I the last. There will be another Buddha who will come, the Holy One, the Supreme One, the Enlightened One, endowed with wisdom and conduct, the auspicious, having knowledge of the universe. He will preach a good religion. He will preach a religion which will be glorious at the beginning, glorious at the climax, and glorious at the end. He will teach a religion which will be based on truth and will be a perfect way of life. And he will have many thousands of disciples as I have only hundreds of disciples. The Ananda asks Buddha, the Blessed One, how will we know him? So Buddha replies, he will be called as Maitri. Maitri means the merciful, loving, kind, compassionate. One equivalent Arabic word is Rahma. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have sent thee not but as a mercy to all the world, as a mercy to all the creatures, as a mercy to the whole of humanity. <laughs> this word rahma, mercy, and its derivatives are mentioned in the Quran no less than 409 times. And every chapter of the Quran, except for Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. So the Buddhist scriptures, almost all of them, prophesy about the Maitri that is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi to come. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is further prophesied in the Buddhist scriptures, which is mentioned in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 36. Mahaparinibbana Sutta, chapter number 2, verse number 32, it says, that as for the Buddha, there are no exoteric or esoteric teachers. And O Ananda, the Tathagatas, that means the teachers, have nothing like a closed fist. We cannot keep the knowledge to ourselves. It should be proclaimed. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever he received as a wahi from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he proclaimed to the whole of humanity. And he told his disciples that never keep it away from humankind. Proclaim it and spread it. That's what's mentioned in the prophecy. There's nothing like esoteric or exoteric. Everything should be told to humankind. It's further mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures, in the sacred books of the East, volume number 11, page number 97, Mahaparinibbana Sutta, chapter number 5, verse number 36. It says that as Buddha had a servitor, by the name of Ananda, so shall the Maitri have a servitor. And we know from history, from the series of Muhammad Sallallahu that the servitor of Muhammad Sallallahu was Anas. May Allah be pleased with him. Nadilawan, who was the son of Malik. May Allah be pleased with him. And Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he says, that my parents gave me to the Prophet at the age of eight. And his mother told the Prophet, O Messenger of Allah, take this to be your servant. And Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said, that the Prophet referred to him as his son or the little beloved one. And we know how that Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he always stood by the Prophet in times of peace and in times of war, in times of safety, in times of danger. He can very well be compared to Ananda. We know when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha, Ananda stood by Buddha. Similarly, we know how that Anas may Allah be pleased with him. In the battle of Uhud, at the age of 11, even when the enemies were close to Prophet Muhammad how that Anas may Allah be pleased with him, stood by the Prophet. Even in the battle of Hunayn, at the age of 16, 
when the enemies who were archers surrounded the Prophet, yet Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, he stood by the Prophet. He can very well be compared like Ananda when the mad elephant rushes at Buddha and Ananda stays by Buddha. So this is the fulfillment of the prophecy that the Maitri will have a servitor. It is further mentioned in the Gospel of Buddha, page number 214, that this Maitri to come, this other Buddha to come, will have six qualities. The first is, he will get enlightenment at night. Number two, he will become bright when he gets enlightened. Number three, he will die a natural death. Number four, he will die at night. Number five, when he dies, he'll become bright. And number six, once he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form in this earth again. These six qualities and criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad We know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the first wahi he got was at night time. As I mentioned earlier, the Quran says in Surah Dukhan, chapter 44, verse number 2 and 3, and Surah Qadr, chapter 97, verse number 1, that the Quran was revealed in the night of power. It further says, he will be lit up. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had become bright. He was enlightened. It further says, he will die a natural death. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had a natural death. Point number four, he will die at night. And we know from the hadith of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that she did not have oil in the lamp. So she borrowed the oil from the neighbor, indicating it was night when Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. It further says that he will become bright at the time of death. And Hazrat Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, says that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam looked bright when he died. And the last point is that when he dies, he will never be seen in the bodily form on this earth. I know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he died in the bodily form, he was buried in Medina, and he was never seen in bodily form again. All these criteria mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures befit no one but the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's further mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures in the sacred books of the East, volume number 10, page number 68. It says that the Tattagattas, they are only preachers. That means the Buddha has to come. They can only preach. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Ghashia, chapter number 88, verse number 21, Fazakir innam anta muzakkir. Allah says to the Prophet, your job is to deliver the message. Giving hidayah is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's further mentioned in Sacred Books of the East, volume number 10, page number 67, that to go to paradise, even your good deeds are responsible. Your good deeds are responsible for you to go to paradise. And Allah says in Surah Al-Asr, chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, Wal Asr, Innal insan lafi khusr, illa ladhin amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqa wa tawasaw bil sabr. Which means, by the token of time, man is very in a state of loss, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. One of the criteria to go to Jannah is amal salihat, righteous deed, which is mentioned in the Buddhist scriptures. And further, it's mentioned in Dhammapad, Mattaya Sutta, 151. It gives the criteria of the Buddha, the final Maitri to come. It says, that he will be a mercy to humankind. He will be gentle. He will be an example to humankind. He says he will be kind. And he will be truthful. So all these criteria befit no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was in brief regarding Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Buddhist scriptures. Let's discuss the prophecy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Jewish and the Christian scriptures. The Jewish and the Christian scriptures, we know that the Bible is divided into the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Bible, according to the Catholics, has 73 books. According to the Protestants, they have thrown out seven books as apocrypha, doubtful from the Old Testament. So total Bible contains 66 books. So the New Testament of the Catholics and the Protestants contain 27 books. But the Old Testament of the Catholics contains 46 books. Of the Protestant, it contains 39 books. The Old Testament speaks about the stories about the prophets that came before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And the New Testament speaks about the life and the times of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We'll first discuss 
the Prophet of Muhammad in the Jewish scriptures. It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. It says, Almighty God says, I shall raise them a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall speak all that I command him. This prophecy says, I shall raise them a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, like Moses, peace be upon him. So the Christians, they say that this prophecy refers to no one but prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And when we ask them, why does it refer to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, they tell us because the prophecy says the prophet to come should be like Moses, peace be upon him. And Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was like Moses, peace be upon him. And when we ask them, how are they alike? They tell us that Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them. Both of them were prophets of God. And both of them were Jew. That's why this prophecy is talking about Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If these two are the only criteria, if these two are the only criteria for the fulfillment of the prophecy that he should be a Jew and he should be a prophet of God, then all the prophets mentioned in the Bible, after Moses, peace be upon him, fulfill this prophecy. For example, Prophet Solomon, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, John the Baptist, peace be upon them all. All of them were prophets of God and all of them were Jew. All of them fulfilled the prophecy. If we analyze, we come to know that this prophecy befits no one better than the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Let's analyze what does the prophecy say. The prophecy says, I shall raise them a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee like unto Moses, peace be upon him. If we analyze Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them were born naturally. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not born naturally, he was born without any male intervention. And this is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 45 to 47, and is also mentioned in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 18, and the Gospel of Luke, Chapter number one, verse number 35, that he was born without any male intervention. He was born miraculously. Therefore, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Jesus is unlike Prophet Moses, peace be upon them. Further, if we analyze Prophet Muhammad and Prophet Moses, peace be upon them, both of them were married and they had children. But according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was not married and he had no children. So Jesus is unlike Moses, and Muhammad is like Moses, peace be upon them all. Further, if we analyze Prophet Moses and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them, they died a natural death. But Prophet Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not have a natural death. According to the Quran, we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was raised up alive. Surah Nisa, chapter number four, verse number 157 and 158. He did not die, we believe. Even if you read the Christian Bible correctly, even according to the Christian Bible, we can prove he did not die, he was not crucified. But the Christians think that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he died on the cross, he was crucified. For more details regarding this topic, refer to my video cassette and the debate, was Christ crucified? But even if we agree for sake of argument, what they say is right. We have to agree that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he did not have a natural death. According to the Christian reading of the Bible, which is not correct, they believe he died on the cross, it was not a natural death. We believe he was raised up alive. Both ways we agree he did not have a natural death. Therefore, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not like Moses, peace be upon him, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is like Moses, peace be upon him. Further, if we analyze Prophet Moses and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them brought new laws. But according to the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did not get a new law. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verse number 17 and 18. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I have come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Further, if we analyze, Muhammad and Moses, peace be upon them, besides being prophets of God, they were even worldly kings. That means they could give the punishment of life and death to the person who deserved it. They could give the punishment of death to the person who deserved it. Where Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, he could not do that. 
and it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 18, verse number 36. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, My kingdom is not of this world. And further, if we analyze Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, both of them, their people, they accepted them as prophets of God as a whole. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, his people as a whole, they did not accept him as a prophet. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 11, that they all forsook him. So here when we analyze, we come to know that Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them, are alike, and Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, they are unlike. So this prophecy refers to no one but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The prophecy further says, I shall raise them, a prophet, from among thy brethren. And we know that the Arabs are the cousins of the Jews. Moses was a Jew. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was an Arab. Peace be upon them both. So Arabs and Jews are cousins. Furthermore, the prophecy says, I shall raise them, a prophet, from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall say all that I command him. We know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to get the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he used to repeat verbatim whatever was revealed to him. It was as though words were put in his mouth. And he used to repeat whatever Almighty God used to say. So this prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The next verse further says, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19, it says that if you hearken not unto my words, I will require of thee, or I will take revenge. That means all those who do not hearken unto the words of this messenger to come, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, Almighty God will take revenge. It's further mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. It says that the book shall be given to him who is not learned. The book shall be given to a prophet who is not learned. And when it is said, read this, I pray thee, he will say, I am not learned. And we know that when the first wahi came to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and when Archangel Gabriel said, Ikra, read, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replied, Ma na biqari which means I have not learned it. This is the verbatim fulfillment of the prophecy of the book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse number 12, that when the book is given to the person who is unlearned, we know Prophet Muhammad was unlettered, he was an ummi, and when it would be said to him, read, he will say, I am not learned. And that's what he said, ma'ana biqari. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also mentioned by name in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. It says in Hebrew, Hikkum Mamitakim Vikulli Muhammadim Zaydudi Zairai Baina Jerusalem, which means his mouth is more sweet. He's altogether lovely. He's my beloved. He's my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. They have translated Muhammadim as altogether lovely. But in the Semitic languages, like Arabic or Hebrew, they add im as a respect, like to Elo, God, that Elo him for respect. So to the name of Muhammad, they added Muhammadim for respect, peace be upon him. So he's mentioned by name in the original manuscript. But now when we read, it's translated to altogether lovely. Now let's discuss the prophecy of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the New Testament. As far as the Christians are concerned, Whatever is mentioned in the Old Testament, they have to believe because that is part of the scripture, that's part of the Bible. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 157, they follow the unlettered prophet, which is mentioned in the law and gospel. It's further mentioned in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says to Bani Israel, to the children of Israel, I've been sent as a messenger to you, confirming what came before me and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come whose name shall be Ahmad. And when we read the New Testament, there are several prophecies of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the New Testament. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. It says, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I shall pray to my father to send you a comforter 
who shall abide with you forever. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse number 26. And when the Comforter will come, who my Father will send, he will glorify me. It's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him? Many of the Christians say that this Comforter refers to the Holy Spirit. Now, carefully note the prophecy of Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7 says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is saying. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him. The criteria for the comforter to come is that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, should depart. Only if he departs, will the comforter come. We know that the Holy Spirit was there when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was being baptized. The Holy Spirit was also there before Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was born. He was in the womb of Elizabeth. Several places it's mentioned in the Bible. So surely this comforter cannot refer to the Holy Spirit. And furthermore, the word comforter, if you go to the Greek and Aramaic, the present scripture, it says it is paraclete. And the translator comforter, paraclete actually means an advocate. And if you go and do research, the right word is perikletos, which means one who praises, or one who is worth praising, irrespective, which is the name of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ahmad and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, irrespective whether it is perikletos, the one who praises, or the praiseworthy, or it is paraclete, whether advocate or comforter, alhamdulillah, all these meanings befit no one better than the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Further, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hear shall he speak. He shall glorify me. He shall show you things to come. This prophecy says, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, tells the people, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that he hear shall he speak. You know, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever was revealed to him, he spoke verbatim. He shall not speak of himself, all that he hear shall he speak. He shall show you things to come, he shall glorify me. And we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has glorified Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, in the Quran and in several hadith. We consider Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, to be one of the mightiest messengers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe he healed those born blind lepers with God's permission. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did glorify Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. So this prophecy refers to no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was in brief regarding the mention of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Christian scriptures. Time doesn't permit me to go and give more quotations. But this is just a nutshell, the tip of an iceberg, regarding the mention of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the various world religious scriptures. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of the glorious Quran, where Allah says in chapter number 108, Allah says, Inna aatayna kal kawsar, fasalli labbika vanhar, inna shaniya kal alaptar, which means we have granted him the fountain of abundance, al Kawsar. And pray to thy Lord and sacrifice the name of thy Lord. And anyone who hated thee, hated Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will be cut off from all future hope. Wa akhir dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahu, Allahu, Allahu.